Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning. You are welcome to the Daily Fountain, the Daily Devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come into the new day. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us. Thank you, Lord, because you never sleep nor slumber. As we come, O oh God, on this special day, Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you let down the light of your word to shine upon our path. Grant us grace to walk in the light of your word, that the darkness of this world will not overcome us in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to embrace the grace that you have given unto us to save us and to walk in the light of the same. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today is Thursday. April 8, 2021, the Thursday in Easter week. And our passage this morning is Romans chapter 6, from verse 1 to 6, with the topic, dead to sin, dead to sin. Romans chapter 6, from verse 1 to verse 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus are baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Dead to sin. Dead to sin. Being dead to sin means that one is no longer ruled by the passion or dictate of sinful nature in man. One is set free from the control of depraved nature of sin. Before our conversion, we were all dead in our transgression and sins, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Although not that we are physically dead, but that we are separated from God. The life of God is strained to us. One is dead in sin, and that is spiritual death, separation from God. Dead to sin, therefore, is to be liberated from the power and control of sin. That is, as it has to do with sin. I have no force to be driven. The only way we can find liberation from sin is through death for anyone who has died, has been set free from sin. Romans chapter 6 verse 7. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Paul here in Romans chapter 6 explained that those who are in Christ, that is by our faith and through the sacrament of baptism, 
participate in his death on the cross at Calvary by releasing ourselves to baptism. And we are burying water. We also identify with him in his death. Jesus died not of old age. Jesus died not because of his own sin, but he died for our sin. So coming to him by the sacrament of baptism, we have identified with his death. And what does that mean? Our sinful nature has been crucified, nailed to death with all his desires and power. Desire to sin, power to sin have been crucified. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slave to sin. That is, because Christ died, those who are united with Christ have or are died also. As Christ was raised from the dead, from the grave, he did also brought us out of the grave of sin. Because Jesus did not stay in the grave, in the same vein, we also, by our faith in him, share in his resurrection. We are raised from the water, or we are pulled out, or after the water has been poured on us, we are marked with the mark of the cross. It means a new life with new nature that is not moved by pressure or force of sin is inputted in us. One is no longer controlled by activities of sin. This makes one dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. I always love to explain this topic, dead to sin, with this illustration. When there is good meal, well cooked, garnished with so many condiments, with flavor, that the aroma fills the environment to so that people in the neighborhood are drawn or moved to desire to have a bite. And the dead man laid in state right beside the pot of the soup or the table where it is served. He's not moved. He's not puffed up. He's not feeling anything. Even when we are ready to put it in his mouth, he's dead. He cannot feel the aroma. No response. And that's what we are saying. That is what it means. Everyone who is dead to sin is not moved by sinful distractions or attractions. No matter how strong the temptation, externally driven or from within, you know, there are some temptation that comes from outside. Oh, he's having this. Why not me? Or within us, and I need this thing. Go out for it. Like Jesus during his temptation, he was said to be hungry after 40 days and nights of fasting. Satan mounted external pressure on him, and he was hungry within himself. Yet he resisted. He said no to Satan. And God expects us to follow him. Dearly beloved, listening to this meditation today, are you dead to sexual sin? Hardly will you see an advert without display of alluring pictures, inviting people to immorality. What about desire for money or wealth or temptation to desire better life? Everybody wants better life. Are you driven by comfort, desire for position or title in the church or in political terrain? All these desire must be satisfied within the provision of God's guiding principle. When I mention sex, yes, within marriage wall. You must be married. And it must be with you and your marriage partner. Not before marriage. Not outside marriage. Not, it's, not, it's not extra affair. It's sin. How do you respond? 
We are not to seek them, but we are to seek the kingdom. And he said, all these things will be added. The unbelievers are running after them, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. But it's a pity that we have so many Christians running after this. As I round up this meditation this morning, those who are dead in sin are slaves to sin. But those who are dead to sin are slaves of righteousness. Where do you belong, beloved? Where do you belong? Are you living under that grace or are you forfeiting the grace? How do you respond in the face of desire for the things of the world? Some people, they forget about the Bible when it has to do with money when it has to do with position, when it has to do with wealth, privileges and advantages around, they deny Christ. But what we are told is the salvation that has brought grace to us is doing in our life is in Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. I read, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present age. As I close this meditation, I put it to you using the ATM and our card. What this passage is saying, those who are dead to sin, as it has to do with sin, sin that we always call by acronym, S-I-N, Satan Identification Number. Once it expires, once your card is exp expired, put it in the machine, hardly will they accept it. And if you force it into it, it won't dial anything. It won't release any cash to you. And so to us too, that's what our life should be. My body, your body should be like that machine. And when sin, Satan identification number comes in, it should be declared invalid. You can't draw anything out of me. You can't draw me into immorality. You can't draw me into corruption. You can't draw me into occultism. You can't draw me into habit of sin, drugs. You can't draw me into falsehood. You can't draw me into inordinate ambition. You can't draw me into falsehood. Why? I am dead to sin. If it has to do with sin, hmm, no response from me. Your card is invalid. It can't draw anything within me. It can only yield to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. How do you respond? Christ has paid for our sin. Are you enjoying that grace? He said, those who believe in him, those who believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. And that's what he has come to do. We always claim it. Do you believe in Christ? And he said, by their fruit we shall know them. He said, not all that says to me, Lord, 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 shall I enter the kingdom of God, but only those who do the will of my Father. And so those who are dead to sin are those who are doing the will of the Father. Mark it. Not dead in sin, but dead to sin. They have nothing that will pull them into sin. We are not saying believers cannot make mistakes. When you make mistakes, you don't continue in sin. You confess. You forsake. And he said, God is faithful. He will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As we close this meditation, people of God, two things. Number one, we have hold life which those who are unregenerated around us are still living. But by the grace of God, we have been saved. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 said, By grace, not by work. We were like them. But now that we are out, by the grace of God, we have been enlisted as children of God, members of God's kingdom. We are not to live that old life. That has ended at conversion. That has ended at our baptism. We have been called to live a new life. A new life that responds in obedience to the word of God. 
that will respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And so, we are now carrier of the nature of Christ. We are carrier of that life that had been regenerated by the blood shed on Calvary tree and is now being controlled by the Spirit of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 says, As many as been led by the Spirit of God, they are sons and daughters of God. They are not being led by their human nature. They are not being led by what people do around them. They are led by the Spirit of God. In obedience to the Word of God, as we have it in Psalm 1, the whole of that psalm is a beautiful reading for us. You are blessed. You don't walk in the path of the ungodly. You don't stand in the way of sinners. You don't sit in the seat of the scornful. But your heart meditates on the word of God. Day and night meditating. And he says, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And it brings forth its fruit. Its leaves will never wither. People of God, what people are running after, we will have it by grace. It may take time, but it will surely come. Because he said, we seek it first, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to us. So we are people of God, and we are to live. People seeing the fruit of God in our life. As I close it, I want to remind you, we are the salt of the heart. If we join people to live in sin, we add to the corruption. And there will be degradation. The situation will get worse and worse and worse by the day. God needs people like salt who will season the heart, who will savage the corrupt age. And we are the light of the world. We are not to walk in darkness, but we are to expose darkness. He said the light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. As we go into this new day, beloved people of God, I want to invite you to make that commitment to God. If our life has been bombarded with sin, right there where you are sitting, you can just accept him. And if you have done that before, but you find yourself dragging back, going back to the old sin, it's never too late. And there is no one, as long as we are breathing, that God will cast away. Say, so we never cast us away. Sin is not to take order in our life, but the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God that will sustain us to live in obedience to Him. So I invite you today, yield your heart to Christ. Confess your sin. Forsake them right there and accept the forgiveness that He had offered over 2,000 years ago. He has offered it. And you ask for grace daily to live in obedience to the Word of God. And I'm not preaching religion today. I'm only telling us what the Scripture says. We can continue in sin that grace may abound. And God wants us to be his proud children in this present age, as he did with Job, telling the devil, see, God can still raise us beyond the confines of the church, in our offices, in the marketplace, in the political terrain. You can see the way we are rising and falling. We need sinless politicians. Those who will feel sorry for sins, sorry for their own sin, and will not hesitate, confessing and moving on with God in obedience. Like the prodigal son we mentioned in our meditation yesterday, we are saying it again. He was accepted as a beloved and part of the promise of God in everything what the Father labored on. We can't forfeit this grace. We can only extend it by living righteously, and by so, we win more souls to the kingdom of God. Shall bow our head as we pray. Father, we thank you for your word you have sent to us today again. For as many who have responded, or those who are still confused, Lord, convict them by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we yield ourselves to you and we crucify the old self. And a new man, patterned after Christ, in obedience to the word of God, we grow in us and that none of us will be slave of sin any longer, but we shall be slave of righteousness, living to please you always. And through us, you will bring light to our darkness in our world. 
and you bring us as salt to season the corruption of our age. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Timber Lockwood Preservative surpasses all preventive measures designed to permanently prevent the damage and quality reduction of wood and wood-based materials by termites, fungi, bacteria, and other boring insects. Use Timberlock Premium Wood Preservative to prevent, correct, and defend wood and wood materials against deformities caused by termites and other insects in the later days. Timberlock is designed to solve wood preservation challenges with a standard you can trust. Timberlock Wood Preservative kills termites instantly. Timberlock Wood Preservative, the wood preservative brand leader in Africa. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.